Good afternoon, YouTube. This will be the fourth in the video series on sizing your solar system components. You can find the beginning of that video series on the uh, link here. And I'll put a link in the video description as well. So as mentioned in the beginning of this series, this is not a hard and fast rule or formula. You can vary components around these rough figures. For example, charge controllers come in increments like 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80 amps, and the cost increases with the capacity. For my system, I picked 40 amps as a good base rating. It seems the cost of the controller doubled to go from 40 to 60 amps. Then I had 400 amp hours of battery capacity in mind, but I only have about one third to one half of that capacity now, since I'm not drawing a lot of current at night. Now for the panels, I actually oversized my array here with about 900 watts of capacity. Now my charge controller will only pull the current it needs to supply the loads I have connected to it, plus charge the batteries. So if I keep the loads and the charging under 40 amps, then that's all the current the controller will pull from the panels. I know when I first looked into this, I somehow thought that the MPPT charge controller would pull the maximum power at all times. And I wondered what I was supposed to do at noon when the panel output peaked and I couldn't use all that power. Now, if you have a grid-tied inverter, it is the case that the power output is maximized at all times. But in an off-grid system with battery storage, the controller only pulls what it needs. So if the controller here needs less power than the panels could produce, it just runs the voltage you can see the voltage is up at 34 volts and I'm pulling uh, 14 amps of charging plus about 10 amps of DC load so that's what 24 amps at 13.7 volts so you can work out the power so you might think that an MPPT charge controller is not worth it but I think it is you'll appreciate the maximized power output on marginal days when you need more power than the panels can produce. So my system is set up to provide DC loads during the daylight hours and then some smaller DC loads overnight. So I have more panel capacity and less battery capacity than an ideal balanced system would have. Your system may be optimized for something else, and that's where you need a grasp of the basic capacity numbers to know where you stand with respect to those. So back to the initial assumption of 12 volt DC and 120 volts AC. What if your system is a different voltage? Well, in a sense, it makes no difference. AC watts are AC watts, no matter the voltage. And for DC voltage, it also makes little difference. Why is that? In my example of a 400 amp hour battery bank, I might purchase four 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. If I wire them in parallel, then I have 12 volts. If I wire them in series, I have 48 volts. If I do two parallel and two series, I have 24 volts. So the battery voltage just comes down to, you know, what kind of batteries you buy and how you wire them up. But the end capacity is the same, 12 volts at 400 amp hours. That might be 48 volts at 100 amp hours or 24 volts at 200 amp hours, but it's the same number of batteries. Now the charge controller amps will have if you double the voltage, but just make that adjustment at the end. And in fact, my charge controller can run on a 12 volt battery bank or a 24 volt. So all I would need to do is 
Yeah, so I would disconnect the charge controller from the battery bank, and then instead of wiring all these batteries plus to plus to plus to plus, if I wired them uh, plus to minus over here and plus to minus, I could have a 24 volt battery bank. I could plug the same charge controller back in. It would pick up that it's a 24 volt a battery bank and then it would adjust the output charging voltage accordingly. Now the only consideration there is I could maybe get by with a 20 amp charge controller but if I ever go to a 24 volt system I would uh, be set for that. And then if you look back the panel watts will stay the same since DC watts equal DC watts no matter what the voltage is. A higher DC voltage is more efficient and the wiring costs are lower but you may have less choice of components and they may cost more than common 12 volt versions. And since I run a lot of 12 volt DC loads it made sense to keep my system at 12 volts so I can use the DC power directly. Also once you get above 50 volts you'll have more stringent wiring codes to adhere to and a 48 volt battery system will exceed 50 volts while charging so you have to worry about grounding and and uh, various wiring safety issues so hopefully this has helped you understand some basic sizing for solar system components if you have any questions, ask in the comments section below. Uh, be sure to rate and share this video if you liked it. Uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos and subscribe to this channel for future updates. As always, thanks for watching.